So this is the most unusual food storage cookbook I own. And I own a lot of them. This is Passport to Survival by Esther Dickey. And this was written in 1969. It's the original hardcover. It was reprinted in 1974. Now, let me tell you a little bit about 1969. That was the year I actually graduated from eighth grade. Our motto was, we are angels, we're divine, we're the class of 69. Yeah, it was a private parochial school. Anyway, but a lot happened in 1969. Uh, Nixon became president. We still had the Vietnam War. And, and in fact, uh, the draft was reinstated in 1969. We had it since World War II. And then kind of just the opposite of the war was, right, the hippie free love movement. And we had Woodstock. But we also had an amazing thing. My mom went out and got the first color TV on our block. And everybody came to our house to watch Neil Armstrong walk on the moon. I remember that vividly in color. And we had a lot of domestic terrorism going on. We had the Black Panthers, uh, the Weathermen, who soon became the Underground Weathermen, uh, the Trial of Seven, you know, the movie that just came out, that happened in 1969. And Native Americans took in occupied Alcatraz. So a lot was happening, and we also had the Charlie Manson murders and the Zodiac Killer. So believe me, a lot was going on in 1969. And it's no surprise that people were interested in prepping. Now, Esther Dickey was a Mormon and she was known as the matron saint of food storage. She actually went on mission trips and went around the world teaching people how to store food and preps, what they needed to survive. And let me read you just a little bit from this Oregon Live, a bio of her. Quote, nobody could say Esther had not practiced what she preached. As a young couple, Russell and Esther lived in a campground for more than two months, baking bread with a reflector oven. In her own East Multnomah County backyard, she once comfortably lived in a 15 by 4 by 6 foot cave as an experiment. She once pushed a loaded two wheel metal cart to Oxbow Park along the Sandy River to live in a campsite by the river for several days. For most of her life she slept outdoors no matter what the weather. She often lectured on food storage and survival preps. And she always signed her book, Be Prepared and Fear Not. And she lived until 93 years old. Now, I also want to read you a quote from another book that was in the intro to this book. It is from Verlin Anderson's Many Are Called, But Few Are Chosen. While less than 10% of the population engaged in farming and with a small group almost completely dependent upon a continuing supply of fuel machinery and smooth functioning transportation, Network famine could and would stock the land within a matter of weeks if violence interrupted the operation of the highly interdependent system of food production and distribution. Food markets would simply empty within hours and people would be left to their own devices. To provide themselves with substances, the magnitude of the tragedy which could, which would result is horrible to contemplate. Sound kind of familiar? Kind of sound what we're concerned about today? Well then, she states, quote, perhaps such depressing and calamitous predictions will not materialize, but there are other nightmare possibilities ahead, particularly in the field of food supply. America's best food supply surpluses have been drastically reduced. And despite the nuclear non-proliferation treaty nuclear weapons and their awesome means of delivery multiply any or all of these factors. 
could bring long before that actual year of our own nightmare, 1984, a nightmare of famine and for the unprepared, deprivation, and even starvation. But then she goes on to warn, and hey, we did make it through 1984 just fine, right? But don't feel too relieved, the nightmare might still arrive for many of us in this time. In reality, for many years, people have been strongly urged to store food and other necessities in their homes against any one or combination of the several possible emergencies, unemployment, sickness, strikes, famine, civil disorder, war, and so on. To be unprepared despite the repeated warnings would certainly increase the nightmare quality of the experience. Perhaps for most of us, there's still time if we procrastinate no further. Well, amen, sister. I think most of you who watch my channel believe that and we want to encourage others to prep. So that's one of the reasons she wrote this book, Passport to Survival. Now, what makes it so unusual? It has 110 recipes in it and all of those recipes use one or up to four of only the same four ingredients. Those ingredients are wheat, flour, powdered milk, and salt. And that's it. That's the only ingredients in 110 recipes. And let me read you some of these recipes. Let's see here. Wheat roll-ups, mock tater tots, sausage pizza, and that sausage is not meat sausage like you think, it's made with gluten, and even sourdough hotcakes. Now, this book goes into how to prepare the wheat. You're going to maybe cook it, you're going to steam it, use the water from it, use the wheat berries themselves, separate it, the bran and the gluten. I mean, a lot of different things you're going to do to that wheat to make it so you can make these recipes. And she very easily describes it. Now, she states that she had a very large family and for over a 10 day period, she only cooked the recipes in this book for her family. And she said it really wasn't as bad as you think. It was pretty interesting and people were full. So it does work. Now she goes on to state, you know, she hopes that people have fresh vegetables and fruit from their garden to supplement this diet. And she says it's important to also have rotating foods such as peanut butter and tomato juice. Oh yes, and vitamin pills. And then she mentions, you know, the importance of having legumes and various other uh, food products to rotate. And she also says it's great to have a freezer full of meat that you could smoke or preserve if need be. So she's realist. She doesn't think most people will just have these four foods, but if they did, they would be able to survive. So this is a little bit different between your rice and bean diet, right? It is your wheat, honey, powdered milk, and salt diet. Now, I am actually going to make one of the recipes from here. It is called ice cream. And we're gonna see how it turns out. And I'll have it in my next video. Because to be honest, I've owned this book for many years, but have I ever cooked anything from it? No, I haven't. So as part of my wheat series, I'm going to. But the rest of this book, about the other half, um, there's actually a section in crafts, you know, making like uh, wheat dough ornaments or even growing the wheat grass and learning how to make baskets or a little hula skirt for the Barbie doll, whatever. It has some ideas. And then it goes into other preps. It goes into food preservation, and it goes into dehydrating and smoking and canning and brining and salting and all those type of methods. It 
talks about the importance of water, how to purify and even build an outdoor solar still. Goes through the other emergency supplies you should keep on hand, what you need for outdoor survival, and then care of the body. Because as she comments, health is very, very important. So, interesting book. I would love to know if you own this book and if you have made any of the recipes in it. Please comment below. Now, I just want to leave you with a quote from her book. I may say that while physical nourishment is obviously of the highest priority to survival, remaining alive without faith, courage, cheerfulness, and a hope of a better future is but to exist in a way which severely debases the value of survival. The brief space, according to the subject in the book, is no gauge of the vital importance of positive, enthusiastic living, whether under normal or survival conditions. So in other words, go out and seize the day, enjoy your life, and don't always look at a morbid future. Be hopeful.